people who have gone out for a pack of cigarettes and never went back to your family, what happened after you left? Got married right out of high school. Everything was going well, but we were young and both were our first partners. Came home early one day and walked in on my wife with another man. Standard insanity ensued, followed by her begging for forgiveness, and we went to months of counseling. Everything seemed well and dandy. She seemed like a totally different woman and couldn't live without me. One day I log into our desktop PC and her Facebook is loaded and there are multiple messages and I had to look. I found exactly what I knew I would find. It crushed me but I acted like nothing happened. That weekend I packed up my favorite clothes and belongings that meant a lot to me and snuck them to the car. Sunday evening I said, Hey I'm going to take the dogs to the dog park and hike for a few hours. When I left, I texted our neighbor to see if anyone showed up at the house. She replied pretty quickly that a male visitor was by very quickly. I told her goodbye and the dogs and I just drove. I had a decent savings and thought, Fuck it, start off somewhere new. And that is what I did. My ex-wife didn't even try and contact me until around lunchtime the next day. When I didn't respond, she blew me up with photos and videos of her with multiple men and about how bad of a lover I was. It fucked me up but I just kept trucking. I ended up in a smaller town where I saw someone was hiring for my trade. Years later, I remarried to the best human ever. I went home not long ago and my mom posted a picture of us at a gathering. My ex hit up my Facebook and asked if we could meet for a cup of coffee she would like some closure. I obviously would like as well. I have to say, for all the resentment and hatred I had toward this woman, our conversation was pleasant and I felt better after we talked. She understood why I left. She apologized deeply, many times and didn't try to blame me for anything. After an hour and a little bit of tears, awkward as hell in public ha ha ha, she asked if it was okay to get a hug. We hugged and said our goodbyes. Once I got home I told my wife about the visit and she got awkward for a few minutes. She left the room and I didn't follow, I thought. Oh I'm sleeping on the couch tonight. Five minutes later, she came back crying and just gave me the biggest hug ever. She told me she forgot what I went through and she was sorry and glad our life is good. Closing, I left a terrible human for the best human ever. I didn't go out for cigarettes, but I pulled a similar stunt. My mom is abusive and I had no spine, so I told her I was going to move in with my dad for the summer. I said I would be back before the end of August. After I moved in with my dad I got my state ID. My mom didn't want me to have any kind of ID and I finally got my driver's permit a few weeks later. I felt bad for lying at the time, but now I'll know if I didn't lie to her I would have never gotten out of there. I would be stuck living on a shitty little hobby farm with a woman who did everything in her power to tear me down and hurt me. When I was 18, I moved out from my abusive father. I was commuting to college at the time and I had morning classes so the night before I packed my car with as much of my stuff as I could and set off. One of my professors that I regularly talked to after class noticed that my car was full of clothes and asked if everything was okay. Over lunch I explained my situation, and he offered to take me in. I had already made arrangements to live with my mother. After my classes for the day were over I went home for the first time since I was a child to live with my mother. I slept on the couch for months before getting my own bed, and we didn't always have the money to eat, but we made it work. I have seen my father one time since then because he swore to me that he had changed. That night he proceeded to get wasted and tried to put his hands on me. I haven't seen him since, and I have no regrets. I was ten years old when my mom and dad split up. We had been expecting it, but I didn't know that my mom had packed up suitcases for herself, my sister, and I. One day we went to school like everything was normal, and went to my mom's parents after school. It wasn't unusual for us to have dinner there. But then mom sat us down and told us we'd be staying there for a while. Ended up being six years before we got our own place. I never got to go back to my bedroom again. My dad got remarried and his wife's daughter moved in and repainted my room. When I had to visit them I slept on the couch while she slept in my room. I still regret not being able to say goodbye to my sister 12 years ago. I said goodbye to my brother and my mom but I was the only one who knew I would never come back. I moved 300 miles away. I have seen my brother and my mom twice since then. I haven't seen my sister since I put her down for her nap that day, before I knew I was leaving. 
After I left my mom got married. My sister went to live with her grandparents. My brother chose to be homeless rather than let our mom drag him around different cities in the middle of a school year. I was able to finish school which wouldn't have happened if I stayed. I stopped trying to, accidentally, walk in front of traffic or overdose on my prescriptions. Started eating food. Got basically blackmailed into seeing my mom after six years while my ex pretended we were together. I finally found a family that actually liked me. Met my boyfriend. Friends for eight years. Together for four. Got my own cat. Have my own apartment with bills paid early. Overall it has been great in between my mom popping into my life. When I was 16, I moved out without telling my stepdad, but my mom was in on it, and I just moved in with my grandparents. I left on a Friday. Got all my stuff in just two trips. I was told he didn't even notice I was gone the first weekend. He was pretty mad once he figured it out, but it was all mostly a non-event. Everything turned out okay for me. It will have been 21 years this September. My dad died when I was pretty young. My mom eventually remarried to a pretty cool guy when I was young. He was honestly an amazing dad, and when my mom got sick when I was at 12, he was absolutely incredible taking care of everyone and reaffirming that I was his son. When my mom died, it was just me and him for a few years and there were some amazing times. He made sure I was seeing a counselor, and we did family things on the weekend. My friends used to joke that he wasn't even my biological dad and he still made more time for me and did more things for me than their bio dads did. When I was 15, he got remarried. I didn't exactly like my new stepmom, but I didn't hate her. I think I just thought that the relationship wouldn't last and he'd move on to someone better. Then they got married and it was kinda weird. I did get an amazing baby brother from that not all bad. My dad died when I was 17 literally taken out by an undiagnosed severe allergy. My stepmom got me from school and drove me to the hospital, and when my dad passed away, she handed me my baby brother and said she needed a minute by herself. I never saw her again. She was much younger than my dad and was an ex-foster our kid with no family or best friends to support her, and I think she looked at her newborn baby and the kid her dead husband inherited and just couldn't handle it. I sure know I wasn't prepared to handle it but my mom and my biological dad had been ex-foster care kids and mom told me a few fuck stories so I wasn't going to let that happen to me or my brother. I do sometimes feel a little resentful that I can't have the normal life I'm working too much and I have a six-year-old to figure out, to consider college, but I don't want my family to just be cycles of poverty and dead-end jobs. Stepmom will probably be charged with abandonment when she can be located but so far we haven't heard anything. I've always been worried that she had a mental health break and either killed herself. I used to call up locally and ask for Jane Doe's that fit her hay coping mechanisms am I right? Or she's had a mental health break and something snapped. Abandonment didn't really fit what I knew of her and I remember that she had some kind of mental health problems it's not like we talked about it though. She could have gone off her meds in the chaos and snapped. I'm more worried than angry but my first concern will always be for my favorite little tyke. We're doing pretty well we have a support worker who has been fantastic, helping us get access to free and reduced cost services. I'm also pretty thrifty I YouTubed how to knit socks and fix clothing and thrift stores are great. I don't live near a major city, and so it's not as expensive as it could have been. Being frugal also helps. There's usually always good stuff out there if you know how to ask for help and my dad always told me the hardest thing but the most important thing to do was to suck up your pride and ask for help. I'm getting better about that, but it's hard. My dad making me do therapy helped a bunch to admit when I need help he said that needing help wasn't about not being capable, but about being smart. That if you're carrying an expensive TV you could carry it by yourself but you're smarter if you grab a friend. I'm almost finished an apprenticeship right now and I'm in a union that's decent enough that wives used to drop off casseroles and leave cribs and stuff on our porch. Everyone should be involved in their community. I wouldn't have survived without everyone willing to go to bat for me. I'm working pretty hard because I'm incredibly fortunate that I met good people along the way. I owe them a lot. I also work part-time at a nursery helping with plants and stuff on weekends for the staff discount and free stuff. I take in home more than a few half-dead fruit trees and vegetable seedlings. The more I work, the more I can throw into savings. It's morbid but I want to make sure if I die, 
he's not frantically worrying about paying for that. It's not exactly a good feeling. My bro and I have been working on expanding our tiny garden to try and offset the cost of food and he seems to like gardening just as much as my dad did. Last year we didn't buy a single potato or any herbs. It's been the best low-cost high-involved activity we're doing and it sometimes makes me feel less guilty that I can't be there more for him like our dad was for me. We have glass pasta jars and tin cans growing basil and rosemary right now I told my bro if he can keep them alive all year without me needing to intervene. We can look at adopting chickens. He specifically wants two chickens named Chicken and Sheik Barbie because he's funnier than I am. We have saving accounts and insurance policies and I'm probably better off than a lot of people. Do you have a similar story? Leave a comment and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this one.